Good evening. Uh, today is Tuesday, February 16th, and I would like to call the Council as a Whole Committee meeting to order. We have one item on the agenda this evening, and that is the petition of Councillor Boschman uh, for a proposed amendment to Rule 4.6. Uh, would the Council members like me to read the rule amendment out loud? Yes. yes. Thank you. Uh, the proposed amendment, uh, which I believe is intended as a deletion and replacement, says, all standing committees shall meet regularly before each council meeting at the discretion of the chairperson or any two members of the standing committee. All records of meetings and information dealing with committees shall be kept by the chairman of that committee. At any meeting of a standing committee, there shall also be posted notice of a meeting of a committee of the whole, which shall consist of the entire membership of the city council. In the event that less than a quorum of the city council is present at, at such time, no committee of the whole shall take place. In the event that a quorum of the city council is present at such time, the meeting shall proceed as a joint meeting of the standing committee and the committee of the whole, and the minutes shall reflect that a joint meeting took place. The chairman or acting chairman of the standing committee shall also serve as the chair of the committee of the whole at such joint meetings, unless the committee of the whole determines otherwise. This rule shall not preclude the city council from meeting at any time as a committee of the whole pursuant to these rules or Robert's rules of order. Uh, Councillor Boschman, if you would like to uh, introduce and explain your petition, you may do so now. Uh, I yield the floor to uh, uh, Councilor Collier. She doesn't mind first, and then I'll come back. Cause it's really uh, it was her petition, and I voted against her petition uh, in the beginning because I didn't understand it. And when I asked questions to the, the previous council president, he said you would be able to. You would. He was going to allow us to ask questions, and even at a full council meeting, we were going to be allowed to ask, ask questions. And uh, one time at the full council meeting, I was denied to ask a, uh, a department head questions because he said you had an opportunity to talk at a committee meeting. And one other time, uh, although Council Walsh did let, let me talk after, there was a controversy about me talking in one of her legislators affair. I really don't believe that I, I used to go to every council, every committee meeting there was and sit on there and ask questions. Now I find that these meetings without being able to ask questions is basically a waste of time. Uh, I feel that you, you're depriving everybody from learning and feeding off of one another so you can get more knowledge about what we're talking about uh, and, and that. So that's why I, I ask that we go back to the old way and I think Councilor Squalia can explain it a lot better uh, than that. This way here, we can sit at the table and ask questions. So I don't have Councilor Squalia on the list at the moment. Um, I have, sorry? I'll speak as Councilor Boschman requested. Uh, I would ask that since I have two counselors who have put in to speak before that, uh, I will leave it to their discretion whether to yield. Uh, if not, then I will put you on the list after them. Councilor Di Natale? I'd like to speak now. Go right ahead. You have the floor. Uh, for the counselors that weren't here two years ago, counselors Kucher, Van Hazinga, Schultz, we had a thorough debate and discussion about this two years ago, I believe. President Zarella at the time, Councilor Zarella put forward the amendment to the rule 4.6 that we have currently. And it was also spearheaded by attorney Pusateri and then assistant attorney Tree that wanted to change our rules because the way we were conducting business and committee put us in jeopardy of being in violation of the open meeting law and the legal department of the division of open government said to them the same thing that the way we were conducting our meetings was not in line with how we're publicly posting them so the rule that we have adopted and i've used for the last two years now was debated by the council at that point 
And the attorneys, and Mr. Zarella is an attorney also, were very adamant that what is being proposed tonight is not an acceptable means of conducting committee meetings. The great majority of the Commonwealth councils and town, town uh, selectmen do not conduct their meetings like this. Um, they allow for committee members who are assigned to committees to be there in their official capacity as city councilors. And anyone else who's not a member of the committee is treated as a member of the public, which means they can speak during public comment. They can, um, they can uh, attend the meeting, take notes. As city councilors, we all have the ability, no matter what we do, to contact department heads well in advance of a meeting or after a meeting. And as everybody knows, everything we do in committee gets bundled as a report and it goes to the full council. And if a committee, if a non-committee member on the council has an issue with something on the report, and my colleague from Ward 2, this happens with him frequently, he'll ask to remove an item from the report and either ask questions on it or make statements and give his or her opinion. And we've always allowed that right. So the way we conduct our committee meetings now is in line with the great majority of municipalities in this Commonwealth. It's also in line with how the state and the federal legislator operates. If you're not on a committee, you're a member of the public. The way we were conducting our meetings previously was irrespective of you being on a committee, we would post a meeting for the finance committee. And it was a publicly posted meeting of the finance committee only. Yet we were allowing all 11 counselors to be present at the table in their official capacity. So it wasn't advertised accordingly. One of the options that was entertained at the meeting two years ago was this option that's before us again tonight, that the council at that time overwhelmingly rejected at the strong advisement of our city attorneys and President Zarella at the time, because the, the argument was, well, the city of Leominster does it this way. What the counselor is proposing is what Leominster does. They're playing the game of having it both ways. They advertise their meetings as committee as a whole and the committee itself. That way they cover both of their bases. If more counselors and the committee members show up, they have a council as a whole meeting. If less show up at a quorum of the committee, they have a committee meeting. The problem with that is the attorneys talked to the division of open government two years ago and the division of open government said that what Leminster does and what this would do is quote suspect. And it's trying to have it both ways. So you never know when you post like this, what meeting you're going to have. And that's the problem. And the division of open government said two years ago that what Leminster does is open to heavy scrutiny if there was to be a challenge. Luckily for them, there has been no challenge, but what Leminster does and what this will seek to do is not in the norm of how legislatures work. Now, the arguments made two years ago were, if I go to a council meeting, if I'm not on a committee, then I can't effectively represent my constituents. I can't put anything forward. Understand folks, no matter what this rule is, if you're the petitioner, you will be at the center table making the case for your petition, advocating for it and answering questions from the committee as if you were a department head. I, as a sitting member, reject the opinion, I would think, that we're not able to effectively legislate if we're not on every single committee. We have committees for a reason. Now, I'm against this for the first reason that it's already been told to us by the attorneys two years ago, this is not a good idea. The second reason is what this will effectively do is abolish committees. If you post these meetings as a joint meeting, there's no point for having a committee. There's no point. All you need is six people and there's no committee meeting. It's a council as a whole. So really what you're doing tonight is if you go along with this, you are effectively abolishing the committees. And two years ago, we decided we weren't gonna do that in line again with the great majority of municipalities who don't do it this way. The argument is you're not gonna be able to participate as much as you'd like to, and that's not true. We all have unlimited access to department heads. And I know for a fact that the Leminster mayor does not allow access of department heads from the council. They have to go through him. This mayor doesn't care. He lets us go to the department head whenever we want. So you can participate in the meeting as a member of the public, speak during public comment, or if you're a subject matter expert, you can speak. 
And that's really the long and the short of it. But, but those are the two reasons why I'm against this. It is, it, it is a practice that the division of open government itself has said is highly suspect. And the second reason is it's going to negate the committees. There's no reason to have committees anymore. We have committees to parse the work amongst us. If we were to have just one standing committee, then all the petitions and orders and ordinances we have, would the agenda would be endless. And this way we divvy up the work. And if someone is that strongly invested in something, they go, they speak, or they take notes. And then in the full council meeting, they can speak on anything they want that's in a committee report. Speak, ask questions, make, make comments. So you still have a bite at the apple and you still can be present and participate, not into the extent that if you were on a committee anymore. And that's really all this is. And um, I've been doing this 14 years. I have never once had a problem with not being on a committee. And I look at this like being on for a zoning board of appeals or planning or conservation. We're not on those boards and commissions, but what do we do if we wanna to go to a planning board meeting? I did it a few weeks ago. I register, I speak during public comment, or I email the, the planning board members questions or, you know, and I talk to them on Facebook. And then I'm prepared before the meeting, I listen to the meeting, and then when it comes to the council, I'm even more prepared. There's no difference here. I, I mean, I look at it as if I'm not on the public safety committee, it's like if I'm going to a planning board meeting. What, what I, I mean, so if you're in favor of this, you're in favor of a practice that the AG's office has deemed highly suspect, and you're in favor of abolishing the committees under the guise of more participation for the council, which I personally find a, to be a false premise. And, and that's my position on this and, and I will be voting against this rule change. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Vice President Walsh, if you'll give me just a moment, uh, it occurred to me that it might be helpful to all of us debating uh, if anyone doesn't have rule 4.6 in front of them, the current text reads, at committee meetings, only counselors appointed to the committee in question shall take their place at the council table or equivalent and participate in proceedings. Other counselors may attend as members of the public, but shall stand or be seated in the same area as public attendees, shall be subject to all rules governing public comment and shall not, when addressing the committee, be addressed as counselors by the committee. Uh, basically, what Councillor Di Natale outlined, if you're not a member, you can show up and you will be treated the same as a similarly situated member of the public. Uh, with that, uh, Vice President Walsh. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I think that Councillor Di Natale has pretty much summed up all of all of my comments and my opposition to this proposed amendment. Um, I would like to add, in addition, that um, uh, the reference that uh, Councillor Boschman made to the time that he was not um, allowed to speak, it was immediately after the passing of, of the new amendment, um, and my failure to allow him to speak was inadvertent. I did speak to him afterwards. And, and we resolved the issue. Um, and I believe that that's the only time that he was not allowed to speak at a legislative affairs meeting. So thank you. Thank you, uh, Council Squalia. Thank you. Okay, so to, to back up, you know, before the, we, we realized that we were not advertising meetings correctly, counselors, if they chose to attend a committee meeting that they weren't on, that they were not appointed to. They could sit at the table and listen to department heads, uh, you know, raise your hand, be recognized by the chair and simply ask questions. So you, you know, in the past, uh, you weren't allowed to deliberate, you weren't allowed to give your opinion. Uh, you were allowed to ask questions of department heads during the committee meeting. And that's really all you can do uh, if you aren't uh, part of the committee. So the problem was that we were not advertising this um, committee, right? This committee meeting as a committee of the whole, because if you have a, a quorum of city councilors that decide to come to a committee meeting, sit 
and be recognized to ask, simply ask questions, uh, then it's not being advertised correctly. And that could be a problem with open meeting law, or it is, it is an, a problem with open meeting law. So the proposal here is simply to also advertise the committee meeting as a committee of the whole meeting. It does not remove committees. It does not effectively change committees. You would simply have the same, you would have the same rights and uh, the limited rights as you had before. What you had, you know, you, uh, for example, uh, members of the whole are allowed to sit at the table, be addressed as counselors and ask questions or otherwise present information as recognized by the chair. The agenda uh, is still of the, the committee of the whole, the joint committee is, is how it would be if another counselor attended and made it a committee of the whole. It would simply be uh, advertised, it would now be a joint committee, but all of the agenda items would still remain as the committee, uh, the standing committee, and all the, and the chair of the standing committee would still be the chair of this meeting. Really all it does is allow, uh, is advertise to the public, which is within open meeting law guidelines, that there could be a quorum of city councilors, hence a joint committee of the whole and the standing committee meeting. Uh, the, according to the mass um, uh, AGO, the uh, attorney general's office, uh, this would be in compliance with the guidance of the Attorney General's Office for Open Meeting Law, as long as the meeting of the whole follows the agenda and does not veer into other topics on the agenda as proposed. And this was certified by Hannah Rush, the Assistant Attorney General of at the time. I also discussed this with um, an Attorney General, Assistant Attorney General Kerry. And this is also uh, confirmed in a ruling by the attorney general's office uh, when someone had this exact same concern that counselors were attending in Marlboro City Council uh, and there was no meeting of the whole advertise. And they said, yes, uh, there, they, she had a problem that there must be a way for duly elected and appointed members of public bodies to sit at such subcommittee meetings even if they're not members and simply ask questions or just listen so they can be mo more fully informed of all the issues affecting them. The attorney general's ruling says we agree and note that there is a way. If the counselors wish to attend a subcommittee meeting and listen to the discussion, they may sit in the audience. If they wish to anticip they, they anticipate engaging in a deliberation where they ask questions, there is a mechanism for this as well. If a quorum of the council wants to deliberate during a meeting of a subcommittee, the council can post a meeting and allow the subcommittee to hold a concurrent meeting of the whole to conduct its business. It's really a simple solution to allow counselors like Councillor Bushman, who likes to attend, commit all the committee meetings so he can ask questions of department heads in a public forum and be fully aware of all the issues concerning us. You know, um, Urging counselors to go behind closed doors and go via email or phone to contact department heads separately and independently, uh, I don't feel is, is the best use of our 11, you know, we're 11 different counselors. We have 11 different um, topic. We have 11 different, you know, areas of, you know, knowledge, right? We're all knowledgeable on certain subjects. We're all knowledgeable on, um, on many different subjects. And sometimes subjects appear uh, in a committee that you might not be on, that you have information on, that you might want to ask questions on. But unfortunately, this current system doesn't allow that. It allows you to contact department heads privately. It's not like we're allowed to contact counselors independently outside of a meeting because that's also against open meeting law. So we can't share information with counselors in that subcommittee. So we can't, so we have to wait to the full committee, but there's no department heads there. 
So we're not allowed to ask questions there either. So all we can do is give our opinions or make statements or do grandstanding. And I don't feel that that's the most effective use of my me being a counselor, my knowledge of being a counselor. Um, I really enjoy attending meetings and I really enjoy being able to ask questions to fully represent all my constituents. Um, and I really appreciated being able to do that. And I would really appreciate to be able to do it again. Um, counselors would not be uh, required to attend any committee meeting that they don't attend, that they don't sit on, right? Well, actually, um, counselors don't have to attend any, any meetings technically, but you wouldn't be obligated to attend any committee meeting that you don't sit on. But if you chose to, then you would be allowed to ask questions. And that's really all we're asking here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, briefly, I would like to clarify one point as a matter of textual interpretation. The proposed amendment as written would not in fact limit participation to questions only, but would make uh, attendees of the putative council as a whole meeting full participants in the meeting, including full deliberation, and arguably would also entitle them to vote on the matters in front of the standing committee. Uh, that said, Councillor Boschman. I'm, I'm going to wait to MD speaks first, Councillor Dean Natale. I'll wait to okay. I'll give the floor to him, and and that and then I'll address what you just said, and I'll back, uh, say some other stuff. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Boschman has yielded his spot to Councillor Giantali. You have thank the floor. You, thank you, Councillor. Uh, so these arguments that were just made were made two years ago, and they were rejected by our attorneys uh, who spoke to the Division of Open Government. And the reason why they were rejected is the exact reason that Council Zarella just talked about. This will give you the full power as if you were on the committee, which is why I said earlier, this abolishes committees. This is in search of a problem where none exists. And if the majority of us feel so strongly about this, then why is the majority of common councils in this co the Commonwealth, they don't do what this is proposing. Gardner doesn't do it, Marlborough, Mattapan, Springfield, Worcester, they don't do it this way. They do it the way we do it currently. Um, so I guess we're all missing the ball that most of these councils are not uh, able to effectively represent their constituents. Um, I have the notes from the meeting two years ago and when Attorney Tree was asked this exact question, and actually Attorney Tree went to, you know, what was, was argue, arguing with one of our councils about what the AG's interpretation was. So, you know, it would have been helpful if most of you probably watched the meeting from two years ago, or the ones that weren't here two years ago would have watched it. But when the attorneys at the time, and I see attorney Pusateri is here, when the attorneys at the time were presented with this proposal that we do what Lemonster does essentially, because this is what Lemonster does, um, the attorneys said to us in that meeting two years ago as follows. If the quorum of the, and I'm quoting verbatim because I took the time to watch this meeting again and, and take notes. If the quorum of the entire council shows up, we intend to hold a joint meeting between the subcommittee and the city council. If this is what the council wishes to do, even if there's a public notice on this, the attorney general's office, when consulted, stated that it was its opinion that this notice is questionable at best because the public will never know if a meeting is going to happen or not going to happen and therefore is not compliant with OML. I mean, this is why we did this. We did it for two reasons. One, we wanted to preserve the integrity of the committee meetings. Two, the AG's office said, this is not, we're not liking this too much. Um, and Again, if for the public who's watching this, they may say, well, why is Consul Di Natale so against this? Doesn't he want people to participate? That's the game being played here to make it look like that I don't want people to participate. Ladies and gentlemen, we ask questions of department heads all the time behind closed doors. I, I hate that terminology because it makes it look like there's something seedy going on here. But we ask questions all the time. 
okay? If we're not prepared for a full council meeting to vote yes or no on a report on a committee we don't sit on, that's our fault. That's no one else's fault. Because the time the, the council agenda is issued to the time the full council takes up the report is at least two to four weeks, okay? And you can go to a meeting, you can state your questions at public comment, you can listen in, you can ask, and you can even make a request to the president of the city council that you want certain department heads to show up for something because you want to address them at that meeting. There is nothing precluding anybody from doing that. Nothing at all. And if you're the petitioner, you're treated like a department head. Whether you're on the committee or not, you sit at the table and you take questions left and right and you make comments left and right. So the majority of us two years ago, the great majority of us figured, what's, what's the big, not only is it skirt open meeting law to an extent, but it makes perfect sense just to keep what we're doing. And I just don't see a problem with this. I don't sit on, none of us sit on a majority of the committees. I don't sit on public safety, public works, property. You know, I put petitions into public works all the time. I know the comment made was, well, you don't have to go to every meeting, obviously, but if we have a council as a whole meeting, you know, I feel obligated to go because now it's posted as such, even though I don't find it necessary to go and sit in on a meeting where three of the four agenda items, let's say, are, I need a berm pudding. If Councillor Kucher or Councillor Van Hasinga has a resident who wants to put a berm at their property, what do I care? You know, what do I care? It's their ward, it's their constituents, mine too, but unless I have a problem with burn placements, I'm all set. So I, I just, th there's no problem with what we're doing right now, none. But I want people to focus their eye on the prize. The AG rejected this and our attorneys rejected this. And I'm gonna defer to them more than anyone else, first and foremost. And secondly, I like the committee structure. This would end it. And I, I have not seen anyone, I don't know, maybe President Zarella can answer this, I don't know how many times he's been told, this ain't working, I'm not having my ability to do anything. You have the full council to vet everything in full. And if you choose not to, that's your problem. You can have department heads come to a meeting, happened to me two months ago. I didn't go to a public safety meeting. Councilor Kushmerik said to me, do you want Chief Martino to be there? I said, yes, I do, because I want to pull something out and ask him. And what do you know, he was there. It's not magic. So I don't want people to think that if we don't vote for this tonight, we're against transparency. That's baloney. So I've already spoken twice. I'm all set. I'm a no. And I hope that the attorney who's present tonight can elaborate on this since he was so adamantly against this too. And I have the notes to prove it. <laughs> so uh, unless he changed his mind. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh Councillor Boschman, since this is your second time speaking, I am going to give the floor first to Councillor Schultz, who has not spoken yet. No problem with me, sir. Thank you. Councillor Schultz, you have the floor. You are, however, muted. Thank you, Councillor Zarilla. Um, you know, I've listened to both sides. I've listened to Councillor Di Natale, and he makes some good points about the, the, uh, the violation of the open meeting law and that you know, we don't want to uh, take away from the, the committees that we have and have, uh, you know, I like the fact that we're divvying up the work among the counselors and so on. But I also see the other, the other side that, you know, they want to, to ask questions. So I'm trying to think of how we could come up with a solution. And I don't, I don't know what if, my, my, uh, my idea is I'm trying to think outside the box and I'm saying, well, we usually have a public comment at the beginning of the, of the committee meeting could we possibly have a public comment at the end of the, the discussion so that if there are any questions that the counselors might have at the end of the, the meeting, they could write them down and, and maybe ask them at the end of the meeting. So yeah, this, this whole idea of this full participation, I, 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 yeah, it, that's not a good thing that, you know, because it doesn't, you know, it, it does effectively abolish the committee. So that's my suggestion. And maybe we could amend this, uh, this rule and just have a, a public comment at the end. So the counselors that do attend, could ask a question that that's relevant. So that's that's the idea I have. I don't know if uh, maybe uh, city solicitor Pusatari could could weigh in on that. Thank you. Thank you, uh, 
So I would be more than happy to have uh, Solicitor Chris Terry weigh in, but I would just like to note that under the current rules, there is nothing preventing um, the chair of any committee from allowing public comment at the beginning, at the end, or before or after any item, uh, provided that it is not while an item is before the committee and provided that all persons speaking during the public comment period are held to the same rules. Uh, I will note that it would probably be suspect if the chair decided to give unlimited speaking time in an instance where there was only one person present and it was a counselor, but uh, provided that everyone is treated as a member of the public, the chair is at full liberty to do what uh, Councilor Schultz suggests. And I thank him for his creativity in uh, attempting to address this issue. Thank you, Councilor Zarola. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't, I, I guess if that was emphasized, I wonder if that would satisfy Councilors Boschman and Squalier, uh, you know, with a public, with the, with the note that the committee uh, chair people are, are uh, you know, uh, have been apprised that maybe that, you know, to, to have to try to remember that maybe we could have a public comment at the end, especially if uh, there seems to be some some questions that uh, need to be answered at the end of the meeting. Thank you. Uh, I have Councillor Boschman. I'll let uh, Councillor Bet Walsh talk first. Go ahead. I you have the floor. All right, uh, Councillor Walsh, you have the floor. You are muted. Thank you. Um, I, I, again, I, I think that um, I, I don't know that this amendment does anything except abolish committees. Um, city councilors can attend and listen and ask questions as a member of the public um, at, at any committee meeting. And as uh, President Zarella just stated, the chair has the option to allow them to um, to ask questions if, if they desire. I have never seen um, a committee where a counselor had a question a counselor who wasn't on the committee had a question and, and was told no, they couldn't ask a question. Um, and counselors do have the option, again, to uh, before the, the city council meeting to ask that a department head attend the meeting and they can ask questions of the department head at that meeting. And I think the, the last thing I'd like to say is that publishing a, a meeting as either a committee meeting or a council as a whole um, we're not sure which it's going to be, but it's going to be either one of those. I think that's disingenuous at best. Um, it's really not giving the public any information um, that, that they would necessarily have to have. So that's that's my comment. Thank you. Thank you. And back to Councillor Boschman. Okay, I'll talk now. First of all, I want to get things straight. When I asked for a council at whole meeting, I didn't say we had the right to, to vote. That's never came across and I made it very clear. I made, I said, all I wanted, all we wanted to do was sit on the committee and listen and ask questions. That's what I made very clear when I put that in. That's what I wanted to do. I also want to point out to you that a few weeks ago, I called the attorney general myself and I asked the attorney general, can we do it this way? The way Lemister did that. They said, yes, you can do it that way as long, and I repeat, as long as we don't deviate from the agenda of the committee, and as long as you don't, you're not able to vote. I, and I asked the attorney general, I said, will you do me a favor so there won't be no miscommunication? Will you come to our meeting and I'll ask the, the city clerk to send you a Zoom so you can participate, so there won't be no client, uh, what do you call it, client privilege here that you're hearing just from my side of the story, that if other counselors have questions they can ask. She said, we can't, but if you want to come to our meetings later on about open meetings, we'll go, you can come. I said, no, I need you to come to our meeting. So I want to make it very clear. She did say to me that we could do that. And there was no violation as long as we stayed to the agenda of that committee meeting. And that was it. And was no voting. You couldn't vote. If I sat on, if I didn't sit on the finances, I could ask questions. 
the reason why I asked this question, counselors, we learn from one another. We learn from one another. And when you, when, if, if counselor, counselor Walsh asks a question, they think something into your head and you say, oh yeah, I never thought of that. And how about this? I've seen times going to a council meeting and, counsel, and, and city solicitor says, oh yeah, that's a very good idea. I never thought of that. And I've seen a lot of the previous councils say the same thing, that they, you learn from one another and all your questions and it helps you more to be more of aware. Not this one-on-one -on -one conversation with Councilor Kutcher and Councilor Boschman or Councilor Zarella and Councilor Boschman. You don't learn because there may be another question that I never even thought of. And that's how you learn and that's how you bring up the issues. But if you're just gonna debate it, Chris, and you just talk one-on-one, -on -one, you don't really know because everything's changed. So how do you learn? And you don't learn. And you don't represent the people right because you don't, you're not entitled to ask questions. And when you say, I want to also point out to you, if the chair, if the chair does not want to recognize you, they don't have to recognize you. And I'll ask the city clerk that question because she even said the same thing. They do not have to recognize you if they don't want to. And I'm not, when I said that, that Walsh, that council got Walsh, she did recognize me after. Council Donnelly got into a conference and talked about it for a while, and I appreciated that. But I also asked one time if I could bring the wastewater uh, manager up to the front table so I could ask him a question, and I was denied at a full council. And he just came back from a meeting, and he was sitting in the audience, and the council president said, no, you had a chance to ask your questions at the committee meeting. So I'm not allowing it. So when you tell me that we can represent the people, then that I'm saying we're not. And, I, and I'll stand by my guns and I say we are depriving democracy in the city of Pittsburgh. And now I can understand why the people of this country get really upset with government. I really understand it. Because I really think that we're not representing the people right. No, I just get the, you know, that's all I want to say. I didn't ask to vote. I never asked to vote in the legislative fair. All I wanted to do was ask questions. If, if, the, if the city solicitor said, I like to use his words, you like cross-examine. And then some of y'all feeds off and say, oh yeah, well, what about this? And, and, comes, and the council uh, city solicitor can know that. He, he's been there many a times. We've asked some good questions. And different councilors have very good questions. And we, and we learn from one another. Because sometimes we didn't think of it. And that's my argument. But when somebody says this, the attorney general said we can't do it, that's not so because they told me three weeks ago we could. And that's what they told me. And I want to be sitting here telling you something different and say in line to get it my way. Because I did call the city solicitor and I told him what, he's, what she said. And I asked her to come. So that's how I feel about it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, first, I'd just like to say, absolutely no one is accusing you of lying, Counselor. Right. Uh, I think I can speak for all of us when we say that if you say that's what you were told, that's what you were told. The only question is, as the attorneys on the council can no doubt uh, agree, the answer to any legal question will vary sharply depending on exactly how it is phrased. Um, so if, if Councillor Boschman says that the Attorney General's office said yes to his query, I would think that none of us should doubt that that is the case. The question would be precisely what the query was. Uh, and with that, uh, I lost my connection briefly, so I do not have the chat box up. I believe that I had Councillor Squalia looking to speak again, but we also had Councillor Kucher looking to speak for the first time. So if my recollection is correct, then Councillor Kucher, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, uh, President Zarella. Um, I, I have a couple of questions. Was this a representative of the Attorney General's office? or the attorney general herself? 
Uh, Councillor Boschman, you may respond. I didn't get a hold of uh, Michael, Margaret he Healy. No, I talked to the uh, representative. Laura Healy. One that works in the office. Okay. I, being an attorney and having to deal with uh, directly with any uh, representative of the attorney general's office, uh, depending on who, and I will back up uh, President Zarella's uh, remarks, that anybody that you talk with, no matter what you're talking about, depending on the subject matter, their range of responses could be from A to B uh, to C to D. You know, you never know what you're going to get. And trust me, I deal with the attorney general's office in my line of work quite frequently. And just to get a response from the attorney general's office is earth shattering. Most of the time, you never get a response. And when you do, it's cryptic. So I'm going to rely on attorney Pusateri. And I'm going to rely on uh, the prior vote of the city council. This is a no. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Squalia. Um, yes, just to clarify, um, you know, uh, I was uh, referring to my original petition, which is this, which is what this new petition is based off of, where I noted um, specifically in the wording that uh, the meeting is restricted to the agenda of the standing committee. Motions, seconds, and votes are limited to standing committee members only. And uh, this is what I uh, shared with the attorney general's office and what they confirmed was um, you know, uh, acceptable uh, and legal. Uh, I see that those that particular sentence didn't make it into this petition. So I understand what you're saying now, um, President Zarella, about you know, um, that's not what this says. That's what I was referring to. And you know, if we were to change it uh, to that, then that's exactly what it would be. And as Councillor Boschman noted, you know, I spoke with the Attorney General's office. There is an attorney of the day who you can call the Attorney General's office and they will speak to you. They will call you back that day. Uh, and they you could also email the Attorney General's office and the attorney and the Attorney General of the day uh, uh, will contact you. Uh, I've contacted them numerous times and and I, I get responses. Uh, sometimes you, you know, like you said, uh, you have to phrase the question. Okay, H how about if, how about if we did it exactly like this? And as I shared all my email correspondence with the uh, the city council, with the city, um, with the attorney general's office, um, you know, it, as Council Boschman noted, they said they said that we could do it this way, as is done in other cities and towns in Massachusetts, but. You know, uh, as Councillor Schultz uh, noted, you know, it's, it's obvious that we're not going to uh, change this, um, you know, the, the, this rule from Councillor's uh, notes, uh, references. Uh, so uh, I would love if we could make some accommodation in public comment, uh, like Councillor Schultz noted, just to allow councillors to be recognized as the public but simply to ask questions, because as um, maybe also as, as it was noted that we can have uh, a department heads attend city council meetings, that's not true. We can't. It was specifically told to Councillor Boschman and I when we asked, okay, we weren't allowed to ask questions at this meeting. Can we have the department head come to the full city council meeting? We were specifically told, no, we changed the rules. You, were, you should have uh, made a public comment at that meeting. We can't have department heads at the regular council meeting. And even if we do, you can't ask them questions. So I, I don't know where that line came from because that's completely false. And also I've attended numerous committee meetings where I was not allowed to ask questions. So again, I, I don't know where that statement or that thought came from that, you know, I've never seen a counselor not be able to ask questions. Well, I- Counselor, been, counselor I, I, rule 211, I, I, rule 211, huh? counselor. Uh, I'm not referring to any counselor in specific. I'm specifically it, saying, I'm just generally counselor. saying, I, I, attend, I attended the meetings and I was not allowed to ask questions. So I know this from personal experience. So I understand Councillor Boschman's, you know, concern. I, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I see no one else in the queue unless there's someone I missed while I was offline. Uh, so I will, I would like to briefly weigh in on this. 
Uh, I will reiterate that I am fully in support of any accommodation committee chairs wish to make uh, uh, regarding the timing and extent of public comment. Uh, I am, however, very strongly in favor of leaving it to the discretion of those chairs. Uh, I would further note that it would be out of order for those chairs to permit questions or comments during the consideration of any agenda item. Um, I would also note that we do have rule 4.9, uh, which is which was adopted this past year and is specifically directed to the possibility of uh, non committee members wishing to acquire information from a given committee. Uh, and further that if any non committee member wishes to watch a committee in progress, and then as Councillor Boschman noted uh, wishes you know has an idea sparked and comes up with a question. That same question can then be asked at the full Council meeting and as far as uh, department heads attending full Council meetings certainly. It would be my personal policy to request that they appear if there is a request from a counselor uh, for a for a question that was not already covered at a committee meeting. Um, but of course, the ultimate decision of whether to require the council, uh, the department head to appear would go to the mayor. Um, there is also the option if, if a non-committee member wishes to communicate to a committee on a matter that they feel they have specific input on, it is permissible under open meeting law to send a written communication uh, to be included in the packet uh, as any other individual may do. And I would request that if any counselor should do so that the city clerk would then include that in the packet for the committee um, or distribute it to the committee prior to the committee meeting date uh, so that it can then be entered into the record. As long as it is entered into the record as a public communication, it is compliant with the open meeting law. Um, that said, I have no one else on the agenda. Do I have a motion on this matter? Motion to give leave to withdraw. Second. I have a motion and seconds to give leave to withdraw. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you would please conduct the roll. Councilor Di Natale. Yes. Councilor Fleming. Yes. Councilor Green. Yes. Councilor Schultz. Yes. Councilor Squalia. Nay. Councilor Van Hasinga. Yes. Councillor Walsh. Yes. President Sorella. Yes. Councillor Boschman. Big no for me. No. Thank you. Councillor Kucher. Yes. That is eight to two. It is uh, leave to withdraw. Thank you. And that concludes the agenda of the council as a whole. If there is no objection, we will adjourn. We will take uh, two minutes unless anyone needs longer and then go straight into the council meeting since we're running behind. Anyone need longer than two minutes? We stay on this website right now or do we go? No, exit and go into the separate link, please. All right. Thank you. All right, seeing no objection, we are adjourned. <laughs>